In this example, we're asked to compute the path integral of f dot dr along c, where c is a curve of intersection of a hyperboloid and a cylinder oriented in a positive orientation. Um, and the, the vector field itself is given by this. So let's see. It says it tells us to use Stokes' theorem, but let's set up the problem and see why Stokes' theorem might be a good choice to, to use. Um, Actually, if you know, if you're told to use Stokes theorem, why not just start with that, right? So, what does Stokes theorem say? So, Stokes theorem says that the integral of f dot dr, the path integral, is equal to the surface integral along the surface, so the surface of the paraboloid in this case, of the curl of this vector field f dotted with ds, and we will be able to parameterize the surface and everything. But the first thing we should do is we should compute the curl because it could be possible that the curl is going to be super nice, okay? And that we won't actually have a whole lot of work to do. We saw this in the last example. The, the integral we ended up computing, we could just use geometry and didn't even have to compute an integral. But let's do it. So the curl here, the curl of this vector field F is the formal cross product. And I always write this out because um, for me, personally, it's easier to remember the method than it is to remember the formula. But if you're a formula person, just write down the formula here. I'm copying down the vector field so that I can use my method that I've memorized here. But um, All right, so there's the formal cross product. And now we need to actually compute this thing to get the curl vector. Remember how this works. We take our partial derivatives, right, this way. So this d, the y derivative of x, y is just x minus 0. So that's just x in that component. In the second component, we have 0 minus y. So that's minus y. And then finally here we have, uh, we have x squared minus x squared. So that's going to be 0, right? So then this vector field that we want to take the curl of or sorry, the vector field that is the curl of our vector field, that this is the one that we're going to integrate up, is just x comma minus y. Okay, so uh, there's our vector field. Now we need to think about the surface. So the surface, we were told, is given by the portion of a hyperboloid. Let me make sure I have it in the right order, but I, yeah, it's y squared minus x squared. So this is a hyperboloid which in the, in the plane that we're used to, and the plane that we're used to it opens upward in the yz plane, right, and downward in the xz plane. So this one's going to be opening, this hyperboloid is going to be opening, this is not a hyperboloid, this is a hyperbolic paraboloid. I've said it wrong this whole video, um, I apologize, but it's a hyperbolic paraboloid. Opens upward this way, and then it opens downward in this direction. And then the portion of this that we want to look at is the portion, so the curve, right, is the portion that sits directly, quote, above, but it could be, it's going to be above and below in this case, the circle here, the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So that's that's how we get the cylinder, right? If you extend that circle, if you extend this circle straight up and straight down, you end up with a cylinder, and where that intersects our hyperbolic paraboloid, that's going to be our curve. And so this thing is going to be, that's a horrible picture. So this is going to kind of curl up to here, back down to here, back up to here, and then back down to here. And this is our little, this is supposed to look like a little portion. It almost looks like a piece of a Pringle potato chip, okay? Uh, this blue portion, this is the curve itself, but it encloses what looks kind of in your mind like a Pringle potato chip or some kind of just a circular portion of a hyperbolic paraboloid. And so that's our curve C. And the surface S is exactly um, the one that is filled out by this thing. All right, so it's filled out by this thing. And it's supposed to be sitting directly above and below um, the circle here, the, the magenta circle. It doesn't necessarily look like that because I drew it and I'm not a great drawer. Okay, but this is what the idea here is that this is now given by a function, and so we can parameterize it. And so let's let's break this down into somehow components here. Our d is going to be the domain here of our parameter domain is going to be this disk, right? So x squared plus y squared less than or equal to one for the domain. 
our vector function is going to take these points and it's going to map them to our three-dimensional right our three-dimensional uh, surface here so it's really just going to look like rounded off portion of this yeah it doesn't have to be perfect okay but it maps us over here to this and how does it do so well we have a formula right so this is the graph of a function so if this is our xy point then over here the point on our surface is has coordinates I'm gonna write it in vector form so that it looks just like this but x y and then z but z is y squared minus x squared okay and what we need to do is we need to compute dr because um, we need to compute the normal vector sorry so we need to compute the normal vector to the surface because the way that we're going to compute this is that the double integral along our surface of the curl of f dotted with ds this is going to be computed on the parameter domain so now that's starting to smell like polar coordinates once we get there um, it's going to be computed as the curl of f plug in these values okay so of r write it like this dotted with the normal vector new da so integrated over the parameter domain over here that means we need to compute new so new this is our vector r right new i'm sure we remember is r sub x crossed with r sub y and so let's compute this by first writing our r again just rewrite it and then we can get into the computation here so r sub x is the x derivative of this it's going to be 1 0 minus 2x r sub y is the y derivative 0 1 positive 2y and then we take the cross product to get our vector nu and the vector nu is going to be 0 minus a negative 2x so positive 2x it's going to be um, in the second component 0 minus 2y so negative 2y and then 1 okay and so this is exactly what our normal vector is and at this point we can go back and we can look at um, our curl of f remember the curl of f was given by this is where it's going to get a little bit oh it's fine so the curl of f is just x minus y and then 0 and because there's no z's in here then this is exactly what we want to use right and our new vector we just wrote down and so what we end up with is the integrand the term that we have to integrate is the curl dotted with new so it's x minus y zero dotted with 2x minus 2y zero and what we end up with is 2 times x squared plus y squared alright so that's the integrand that we need to integrate up and we need to integrate that up over our circle and notice that this looks like polar coordinates as well right so let's write this down by the way all of this is to compute the path integral around this boundary of this Pringle chip right so the integral around the boundary f dot dr has now been reduced to the double integral over this disk d of 2x squared plus y squared da we're going to use polar coordinates right and in polar coordinates our domain d is very nice r goes from 0 to 1 theta goes from 0 to 2 pi and just remember uh, our da in polar coordinates has to be r dr d theta and this term looks like r squared right and so this integral is, is a breeze it ends up being 2 times the integral 0 to 2 pi d theta times the integral from 0 to 1 of r cubed so r times r squared dr and so this is 2 times 2 pi times this is going to be 1 fourth and this is just pi and so there's the work done by that vector field around that simple closed path which bounds our what I've been calling a Pringle potato chip shape